It's just a beautifully written piece by Diablo Cody. And, you know, I think I've been doing this for over 20 years, and when good writing comes around, you're just super appreciative of it. Marlo, you're glowing. God, really? Because I feel like an abandoned trash barge. There was something <laughs> that came out of her when she wrote this. It came from a very real, deep place. And I think as a mother, I could feel that. No, no, no! What I think Diablo wrote was a script that not only spoke to the idea of parenthood, but that moment that you actually have to turn the chapter and say goodbye to your youth. Marlo and Drew are best friends. I don't know if that comes across in the film, but that's the backstory that I created for them. The problem is the circumstances of their life are have become so stressful and distracting that they just don't know how to connect with each other anymore. So how are you feeling? I feel fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, good. OK. Good. All right. Ron Livingston brought a sense of empathy that he has through his character in playing all of his bad qualities, that he's not really emotionally or physically available, uh, that he's kind of checked out a little bit, that he's in denial about a lot of things. And I think he's just as much drowning as Marlo and just trying to kind of keep his head above water. I think Ron Livingston remains kind of one of the most undervalued gems of modern acting. He's so gifted, so nuanced, and so funny, and he brings realism to every scene he's in. Hey, you guys excited to see your cousins? Yeah. Is the dog going to be out? Jonah, buddy, that dog can't hurt you. He's like two pounds. What is that dog's name again? Prosecco. I want to kill myself. What? No, mommy's joking, honey, like a clown. Honk, honk. He and Charlize had this kind of remarkable charisma as an honest-to-God family. Sometimes it's harder to show two people deep into a marriage than it is two people falling in love. You know, you put two actors in a room and they have chemistry and they're excited to see each other and they could be falling in love. That's one thing. But try to get years deep into a marriage with three children where two actors have to show up on set and suddenly have patterns of behavior that are supposed to be developed over years. And Ron has this gift of doing these little things that make you just feel that this is a real relationship with real history. Hey. Frozen pizza, awesome. Thought we weren't doing screen time. Oh, you know, it's fine by me. It's, it's your rule. When I'm watching Charlize act, I get this singular performance where I'm watching her on a monitor and I'm seeing in real time her do things that are just magical. And it, when I watch her act, I feel like the movie is coming to life. <laughs> this is not an easy role. Diablo Cody does not write easy roles. Um, the dialogue is nuanced and tricky and funny and unusual, and the characters are flawed. And Charlize has the kind of bravery to take on a role like that and do it unflinchingly. What is this quirky thing everybody keeps saying? It's so stupid. What does it even mean? Do I have a kit or a fucking ukulele? Just say what you mean. You think Jonah is retarded. No. Yes, and he's ruining it for everybody in his class who's reading, like, the Iliad or whatever the fuck they read. <sighs> I'm sorry about my retarded son, Lori. Oh, I'm sorry, quirky. Mark is like one of my favorite actors. He's just so incredibly funny and would bring stuff every day to the set that would just have us in stitches. Marlo. On a personal hug buffer now. Oh, uh, yeah, just what you've always yeah. wanted. It's actually kind of true. He was just so perfectly cast because I would be so psyched if he was really my brother in real life. There were days where I was like, God, I really wish you were my brother. Um, I would have so much joy in my life. Do you like it? When do the birds start singing? I think he actually really cares for his sister because he, he's terrified for her. I don't want what happened last time. Don't do that. I love no, you. seriously, you're being an asshole. Just Drew stop. needs to focus on his proto structures, and you need to be happy, especially for Jonah. I think he brought a sense of 
really who Marlo is within the first like 20 minutes of the movie that you don't get through anybody else's perspective. And the way he talks to her and how he kind of like sees her life is probably the most honest, even more than her husband. And I think because of that, desperately wants to help her. Get over yourself. Call her. She comes highly recommended. Hello. I'm Tully. Tully is this odd modern adult Mary Poppins who comes into Charlize's life at a moment when she can't even think straight as she tries to keep up being a, a mother of three children and begins this kind of profound relationship where through the night, not only does she start to take over mothering duties, but she creates an unusual bond. Marlo and Tully have a really interesting rapport. And at first, I think Marlo is very uncomfortable with Telly. She doesn't quite understand who she's dealing with, and she's kind of alarmed by the fact that Telly is this kid. Um, and at the same time, Telly is somehow able to speak to Marlo in this really specific and bizarre way, and they form a connection really quickly. Marlo, I'm here to help you with everything, not just Mia. The movie's about a relationship. Um, and so I, I spent time rehearsing and, and thinking a lot with um, Charlize and Jason before we started filming and trying to establish Tully and Marlowe's sort of intertwined history together and where they're going and what they need from each other. One thing that, you know, Diablo did brilliantly through Tully is use this relationship not only as a way for Charlize to understand her children better, but as a way to actually look through Mackenzie's character as a mirror into herself. This is like one of my favorite songs. I know mine too, that's why I played it. It's just a testament to, to Jason's brilliance that he thought of Mackenzie for this role because I honestly don't know anyone else who could have played it. You know, when Mackenzie first came to the movie, it was recognizable the day that she started shooting on Tully because something changed in the way that both uh, both the crew responded, the way Charlize responded. I think Mackenzie brought Charlize to life and vice versa. Girls don't heal. Girls heal. No, we don't. We might look like we're all better, but if you look close, we're covered in concealer. Tully is a character like n no other character I have seen in a very long time in a film. And Mackenzie Davis is just so incredible playing this part. She carries this weight of knowledge, yet comes across very naive. And it's such a beautiful contradiction. Diablo is brilliant at creating complicated women on screen that are smart and are admirable, and they're funny, but they're also deeply flawed. And I think because of that, we can relate to them as women and as men. You know, if you want to run off or something, I, I mean, I get that, because I, I want to do that too sometimes, but I'm not going to. I love us. My mission in my career is to write roles for women that I have not seen before. I had never seen a movie about a woman with postpartum depression, which is so strange to me because it's incredibly common. And I feel like if it was something that afflicted men, we'd have like a whole catalog of films about it. I, I feel like there are all these untapped feminine experiences that have not been represented in films still. So I'm just constantly going back to that well. What are you gonna do when that cute little butt of yours drops and your feet grow a half a size with each pregnancy and this whole free spirit thing? It stops being charming and it just starts to look ugly. I'm not afraid of the future. Oh my God. You should be. I just love this movie so much. I really, it's really hard to come across something that is this special and this unique. Especially about things that I think we see so much in films, but we've gotten so used to what we've seen that we think that that's the truth. And this movie really turns all of that on its head. And I think the sharp wit that um, is in the tone of the film really makes you enjoy watching some of the most brutal, honest things about motherhood and just being a parent. Thank you for keeping me alive. <laughs>